Back on The Blend today, we have Brent Forsberg from TA Forsberg. Good morning, Brent. Good morning, Bob. It's great to see you again. Good to see you. So I, I have a question for you. When you're developing a project, how do you understand what the space should look like? Yeah. So the, the term that we use is scale. And when we're looking at how we develop, one of the things that's important is how are the people going to use the space? What's the intended purpose of it? So we go in and we look at how many people are gonna be there. What are the types of uses that somebody would want to do there, whether it's gonna be a sitting area, an activity area. And then we plan around that and then we integrate the buildings around. So that way the whole site kind of has that flow to it. You know, think of a time like when you're sitting out on a cafe on a street and everything just feels good, right? The energy feels good, it brings life to you. There's a lot that goes into making that happen because at the same time, if you go to spaces that when you're walking through, you know, it, it feels like it's, it's tiring. And that all has to do with how the buildings align, the natural uh, plants, how it interacts with the road and how it interacts with the other people that are around. That's very interesting. And as a developer, that's something really important to you. Absolutely. You know, when we look at it, when we build something, it's going to be around for at least 50 years in its physical structure. So it's going to be interacting with the people for the next two, three generations. So that's why it's so important to understand that we use tools like a gentleman named John Gell who wrote Cities for People. He redeveloped Times Square. So he spent 50 years working on these ideas to create these better understandings. So how does scale fit into that? Is the concept of scale similar? Yeah. So when you're looking at that, that concept of scale, it has to do with whether if it's a spot, let's say that is going to be a sitting area. Maybe you want that to be 20 feet wide by 10 feet in, in length. So that way, when people are there, it feels kind of you know, intimate and comfortable. And if it's something that's going to be used for outdoor activities, you're going to want you know, up to a couple hundred yards. Yeah. Is that, well, is that placemaking then too? Or is that different? Or how does that yeah, play? So it's, it, it, it definitely plays into placemaking. You know, placemaking is the activities and things that draw people to stay there. So the scale is that first part. That's the framework that then placemaking gets to add all of the activities on top of. Yeah, all the things that go into developing any any sort of uh, property, which you're doing a lot of. Yes, yeah, you know, and, and whether it's residential, whether it's commercial, it's always a little bit different. And that's what makes it fun and understanding. And really it's about talking to the people that are in the area and, and what, how do they want to use it? What's their intended uses? Very interesting. Brent, thanks so much for joining us this morning on The Blend.